Hey guys, it's Molly here and today I'm going to be doing a guide dog Q&A video and it is absolutely beautiful outside so I'm sitting in my backyard. I'm sorry, I'm, I live on a corner so if you hear any traffic going by I'm really sorry. I hope it's not too distracting but it's the last little bit of summer and I couldn't help but come outside and soak it up. So I have my questions here brailled out. Um, I wasn't able to answer all the questions, there were so many, but now that I know you guys are interested in stuff like this, I'll definitely do another guide dog Q&A video maybe in a few months or whatever, um, and hopefully then, if I didn't get to answer your question this time, I'll be able to answer it then. So I guess I'll just jump into it. The first question is by Deanna. I'm not going to say last names because I don't want to butcher anyone's last name, but Deanna asks, how do people get the funds to get a guide dog? So that's actually a great question because what a lot of people don't realize is guide dogs are really expensive. At the school I go to, the Mira Foundation, guide dogs are anywhere between thirty to forty thousand dollars per dog. And I know for me personally, I would not be able to afford that, and neither would a lot of other people. So guide dogs are all donation, it's all fundraising. Every single guide dog organization is just that, it's charity. Um, it's, there's no government funding for it, there's nothing like that, so it's all from the goodness of people's hearts, um, doing fundraisers and whatnot, um, so that every single guide dog recipient does not have to pay anything at all, which is incredible. So us as guide dog recipients, we get our dogs for free, but it does cost the school a ton of money for training, for raising it, for having us there for our um, two week to four week training sessions. So. I'm going to leave the link to the Mira Foundation down below. It's an incredible, incredible organization and if you're interested in donating, getting involved, fundraising for them, I know they would really appreciate it and so would I because um, without people like you, people like myself wouldn't be able to get a guide dog. So I'll leave that below and you can find all their information. The next question is Ryan and he asks, One minute, just have to read it. <laughs> so how do they train the dogs to know when the light is green, uh, to find the right bus? Also a great question because this is another really huge misconception with service dogs. Um, the dog does not know when the light is red, green, or yellow. It does not know that, hey, that's the 51 bus, that's the one my mom wants to get on or my dad wants to get on. They have no idea. It's all up to the owner. So for me, when I get to a crosswalk, he will stop at the curb so I know that I'm at a crosswalk uh, or I'm at a street crossing. And that's when it's up to me to start listening to traffic, determine by listening to the patterns of the traffic, do I think it's a four-way stop? Do I think it's a lighted intersection? Is it a T? Um, is it an advanced green? How many lanes of traffic are there? And determine for myself when it's an appropriate time to cross. Guide dogs are trained with intelligent disobedience. So what that means is if I've determined that it's a safe time to cross, I tell Gallup to walk on. And if he thinks it's not a safe time to cross because he's looking and he's like, what are you doing? There's cars driving right in front of our face. He's not gonna cross. He will not listen to me. And he's been trained to do that. So um, if you guys want a video on like a blind person determining whether it's safe to cross the streets and kind of like a video of me walking around a neighborhood and determining crossings and that kind of thing um, and just different orientation and mobility skills I can totally do that so just comment down below if that's something you're interested in um, and I'll definitely consider doing that in the future so the next question is Michelle and Um, Michelle wants to know basically is my guide dog trained to ignore other animals what happens if a dog barks that kind of thing so yes when Gallup has his harness on he is trained to ignore all other service animals all other pets squirrels birds he is trained to ignore them all if a dog does bark at him or lunge for him he probably will react he will look um, and that's when I will tell him, you know, pay attention, and that's his sign I should put my head forward. Um, 
something that's kind of interesting about my guide dog because Gallup was trained at the Mirror Foundation which is located in Quebec he only knows French so all of my commands I'm saying them now in English but when I speak to him all of them are in French and I probably should have mentioned this at the beginning but for those of you who don't know uh, maybe you don't follow me on Facebook or Twitter or anything like that Gallup is my new guide dog we just returned home from three weeks of training together um, less than a week ago so it's pretty brand new he is my second guide dog I got my first guide dog Gypsy when I was 13 and she worked for seven years up until she sadly passed away a few months ago due to uh, a really aggressive form of cancer so he's my second dog I got him at 20 and he's absolutely incredible um, he's my, my baby boy already I'm, I'm so excited about it so yeah I probably should have mentioned all that at the beginning but you know I forgot so uh, next question is Katie and Katie wants to know uh, was Gallup the first dog you were paired with uh, when you went for training um, and she also wants to know if I can teach you guys a little bit of something about Braille and I definitely will I'll do that in an upcoming video maybe uh, next week or the week after actually I'm, I've ordered a new brailler and I'm waiting for it to come in the mail. So when my new brailler comes, I'll do a video on my new brailler and my old brailler and how braille works and uh, just talking about you know, my experience learning braille and all that stuff. Uh, so definitely I'll do that. And then to answer your question, was Gallup the first dog I was paired with? Again, it's kind of funny that you asked that because Gypsy, when I went to get her, um, it, was, it was definitely like she picked me. There was no other person she wanted to work for. Whenever they'd have her walk with other people, she'd walk them over to me and sit down. Like, she definitely did not want to work for anyone else. She's like, this is my mom, I know it. But it wasn't quite the same with Gallup. Um, and something interesting about the Mira Foundation is most guide dog schools pre-match the guide dog to the recipient. So that means that before I ever go for training, they've already determined that you're going to get a yellow lab named Lucy. And they've already pre-picked it. Which um, is is much different than the way that Mira does it. Mira does not pre-match. Once you get to the school for training, you spend um, a day or two or three, however many it takes, working in the kennel, working with a bunch of different dogs who are ready to be given out. And then after working them, they'll talk to you, how do you feel with each dog? Um, and they'll talk to you about you know your lifestyle and what you're looking for in a dog, what personality traits. They'll watch your walking speed with each dog. Um, how you're emotionally connecting with each dog and then from there they'll determine which one is best for you. So on day one, uh, Monday of training, I worked with five different dogs and Tuesday morning I was given a St. Pierre which is a breed, again another thing that's really unique about Mira, it's just a really unique school in general, but um, Mira created their own breed so they've created a St. Pierre which now at this point is pretty much its own breed, but before that it was a mix of a lab and a Bernese mountain dog crossed. And they crossed and crossed and crossed and crossed and now they're crossing St. Pierre's with St. Pierre's with St. Pierre's with St. Pierre's. So it is its own breed. They're beautiful, long-haired, black and white dogs. Um, so I was paired with one of those named Mistral, um, which is a French wind or like a wind they have in the winter time in France. Uh, but I found that kind of like a tongue twister so I changed his name to Milo and I worked with Milo for three days Tuesday Wednesday Thursday of training and then by Thursday evening I felt like it really just we weren't we weren't clicking he was a fantastic dog but it just wasn't working and so I did switch Friday morning I went back into the kennel and I switched to Gallup who is a Labernese so first generation his dad is a Bernese mountain dog and his mom is a black lab so he's a first generation Labernese, um, same breed as Gypsy, although she was second generation. Um, and, and that's who I was matched with. I had, I had worked with him on the Monday, so I had known him, but once I got him Friday, it was, um, it was really emotional. I really honestly struggled with it. I cried and cried and cried. I just kind of wanted to go home, to be honest, because when I put my hands on Mistral, he felt nothing like Gypsy. He felt nothing like my first guide dog. But when I touched Gallup, he was tall and he had the short hair and, and he felt like Gypsy. And touching him and knowing it wasn't her was really hard for me. 
and luckily my fellow classmates and my trainers encouraged me to keep going to push through and to give Gallup a chance and I did and I'm I'm so happy I did because he's amazing and I couldn't imagine having left without giving him that chance so I feel like I've really rambled with that but um yeah basically that's that's your answer um next is Mackenzie and Mackenzie wants to know um how are they trained and what is the length of training so Gallup I got him at 27 months so typically um, what happens is for the first year to year and a half of the dog's life they go to a foster family and that foster family teaches them typical uh, general commands like sit stay that kind of thing um, of course all in French because it's from Quebec and they socialize them so they take them out to shopping malls to restaurants to work to school wherever and they get them used to all different types of environments and then after a year year and a half they go back to the guide dog school and that's when they start official harness training so at Mira they harness train for six months which is um, pretty long compared to most other schools a lot of schools do three to four months of harness training Mira does six months um, so it just depends on each school and, and their method. Um, but yeah, so Mira does six months of harness training, and then they're fully trained and they're ready to be given out to a recipient. Um, and then, like I said, once you go to the school, they work you with all sorts of dogs that are ready to be given out, and they find the right match for you. And that's how it works. Sienna, oh, I love your name, it's beautiful. Uh, she asked... Um, who was more more energetic, Gypsy or Gallup? And I would definitely say Gypsy. Uh, she, up until nine and a half when she passed away, she was like a crazed puppy. Like she just always had so much energy. Um, and Gallup is extremely calm. He's definitely still a puppy, definitely still acts like a puppy, very playful, but much more calm. And, and his loving nature is he's loving in a more calm gentle way whereas gypsy loved you in in your face kind of way um i haven't even heard him bark and i've known him for three weeks but gypsy she loved to bark and jump and of course when she was off harness not when she was on harness but uh yeah she was definitely more more energetic um but you know each dog has their own personality and and I love both of them. I love both my babies, my baby girl and my baby boy. And then her second question um, was, do I ever feel Gypsy still around me? And absolutely. Um, you know, all of this kind of thing is, is, is personal, personal belief, personal experience. For me, I totally believe in spirits, uh, in reincarnation and stuff like that. And so I totally believe that her spirit is still with me. I believe that she was helping me find Gallup. Um, and that she's been helping me every day since and every day up until then and please don't comment uh, down below with hate or anything that's my personal belief and um, yeah that's that's how I feel about it and oh I was gonna say the final question but that was a lie I have two more questions here see this is why I don't want to make this video super long so I hope I hope I'm not boring you guys uh, thumbs it up if you've made it to the end of this video which is not yet but if you do make it Thumbs it up, because uh, I want to try to figure out what length you guys like. Um, so the next question is Connie, and she asks, uh, basically, have I ever been denied access somewhere with my service dog? Um, so by law, my service dog is, is a piece of equipment. He or she is a piece of me uh, that helps me function in my everyday life independently. And so I am not allowed to, not, to be denied access anywhere even if it says no dogs allowed, I am allowed with my service dog. And that goes for anyone traveling with any form of a service dog, whether it be a PTSD alert dog or a seizure alert dog, um, dog for somebody in a wheelchair, whatever that person has a service dog for, as long as it is a certified service dog and you are a certi certified service dog user, then you cannot be denied access anywhere except an emergency room. Um, and that's obviously for, for cleanliness reasons and some some areas of hospitals like ICU rooms and whatnot. Um, but other than that, I'm allowed absolutely everywhere with my service dog. Places have denied me. Um, my favorite food is Indian food and sushi. 
and I often find when I go to restaurants uh, for Indian or sushi I have trouble um, and that's purely just a cultural thing culturally um, they're not educated on service dogs or um, in their culture dogs are viewed very differently and so in those circumstances it's it's just purely education um, and and it's up to me you know I take it upon myself to educate them and to let them know this is the law you can get sued you can get fined for this um, and then it's it's up to them how they want to proceed if they want to let me in fantastic that's what usually happens if they don't then I could pursue um, a lawsuit and I believe now as of a few years ago in Canada it's up to ten thousand dollars reward for being denied access with the service animal um, and I also find cabs is another difficult one if I call for a cab I always let them know I'm traveling with a service dog just so they're aware so they send me a cab driver that is aware um, and knows it's coming but trying to flag them down on the streets um, I often they just drive by and at that point there's really nothing I can do if they're gonna drive by they're gonna drive by but I'll always end up finding someone nice who will stop for me. Um, and final question is Susan. And Susan asks, why do they cross the lab and the Bernese Mountain Dog? So again, I feel like I keep saying it, but Mira Foundation is a really, really unique guide dog school. Um, they give dogs to youth who are, I believe, 11 and up which is incredible because most guide dog schools will not accept you unless you're 16 or up. Some, I don't know if it's still anymore, but some when I was younger and looking were even 18 and up, which is crazy. But they're 11 and up, which is incredible. And they're the first school who started doing that and their movement is, is slowly spreading, which is fantastic. But, um, so that's very unique of them. But another thing that is unique is their breeding. So like I mentioned, they have the St. Pierre's and they also do the Labernese. Um, same same crossing, it's both Bernie's and Lab, but um, like I said, St. Pierre's are now its own breed, whereas the Labernese are are more of a straight um, mix of the two. So the reason they mix the the Labernese, the reason why they created this breed, Eric St. Pierre, who is the founder of the Mira Foundation, created this breed, is because there was traits he loved about both breeds, and there was traits he didn't like about both breeds and he felt like if he crossed them um, because what he didn't like about one breed uh, and what he liked about the other were the, were kind of opposites he felt like if he crossed them he was possibly going to get the perfect mix of both and through breeding and through picking the genetics of the dogs and getting all the, the great breeder dogs they have um, really gotten a to a fine art really of dogs and um, it is. It's a really incredible mix. It's a really incredible breed. Uh, both my dogs have been Labernese, and I I love the mix. I think they're incredible workers, um, and and I think he was right. He he did come up with something pretty special. Um, and the Saint Pierre's are the same for them. They're incredible, incredible dogs. Um, lots of people in my class this time around got Saint Pierre's, and they're really fantastic workers. So most schools you'll see purebred labs, golden retrievers, poodles, those are the three most common. Um, and the Mira Foundation is the only one that does use the Labernese and that uses the St. Pierre because they are the ones who created it. So it's pretty amazing. Um, yeah, so that's, that's why they did it. And that's all the questions I'm gonna answer today. Um, oh, and if, you, if you've been seeing my earrings, um, they're, they're like little wooden elephants. Elephants are my favorite animal. And my brother brought them back. They're hand carved from Ghana. So we brought them back when he went to Ghana earlier. I wasn't sure if you could see them, but I thought I'd mention them. They're really cool. Um, so thanks, Brady, uh, <laughs> my older brother. Yeah, so that's that. Those are all the questions. Um, comment below if you liked this video, if you want me to do it again, if you have any other questions. Tweet to me um, at Molly B Official. It'll be linked down below. My Facebook, my Twitter will be linked. Um, tweet with the hashtag Film at Molly with any video requests, anything else you want to see me do, um, or a comment down below. But honestly, Twitter is probably going to be the easiest way for me to see it. So yeah, tweet tweet it to me, and I'll try to film it. And subscribe if you want to get any more videos. Uh, if you want any more updates from me, and that's all.